It's June 2024 and NiceHouse has just announced they've licensed Marathon firmware to run on Bitmain Ant Miners. Let's try it out. To get the firmware, you go to NiceHouse's homepage and then scroll all the way to the very, very bottom. Go to the download center and click on Miners and Tools. Then scroll down until you see uh, NiceHouse firmware mining. All in one download for all models and control boards, including installation, SD card, revert, and upgrade versions. Once that's finished downloading, extract out the zip file. There are two ways for doing the upgrades. There's the SD card images. So they have ones for the Marathon control board, Beagle Bone, um, oh, and also it's the disk image files. Those are the ones that we use. Uh, and that's for the AM Logic and Xilinx boards. There is also a tool, a GUI for flashing the um, miners online. Uh, we're going to start by trying to do a, a flash an SD image and see how that goes. I'm going to use a popular imaging tool called Belena Etcher, so we'll just say flash from file. And because I'm using a Xilinx or AM Logic control board, I select that image. And now I say where to write it, write it to, so I'm just using a 16 gig SD card. And then you just simply say flash. The process takes maybe three minutes. For me, it's sit there, it's um, looking like it was not running for maybe a minute, and then boof, it all suddenly goes through. Okay, let's take this flash cut out, and I'll go plug it into the S19. On first boot, I noticed the miner has changed its IP address, so just keep an eye out for that and it's root root the normal login process from here we head over to config now i noticed it started off with two pools filled in stratum ssl for a nice hash and then the uh, tcp one i've swapped them over i prefer to connect by tcp first because it's simply quicker and uh, i'd like to lower my latency so i just swapped these two pool zero and pool one urls over and then i put in my nice hash miner address with the asic name on the end I also have a local Bitcoin solo pool, so I use that if there's ever uh, little short internet outages or sometimes I like a little bit of gambling and I'll just mine to that. And then as a last resort, I tend to mine to CK pool. If we carry on down, we've now got some choices here. So operating mode, I've set mine to automatic, but you can also go for fixed frequency. Um, stock hash rates, so it just runs as normal, but tries to be more efficient or sleep mode when it turns it off. Uh, and so I've set mine as a hash rate target, but you can also adjust it by percentage or aim for a certain power. Uh, so this is a 120 terahash unit, and at the moment Bitcoin is floating around 65 to 70,000. So I'm trying to run it in the least amount of power consumption mode at the moment, so I'm targeting 85 terahashes. It then tells us the hash board model and our, our profile, so is this for air cooling, hydro cooling, etc. Then there's a couple of advanced options down here. Uh, under advanced control, probably the one that would be used the most would be the override fan control. This setting is fairly basic, or you can simply set it as a fixed fan speed. Other options on the left here are the logs, so you can see what's happening, and basic network settings, so you can set the name for the ASIC and how it's configured. And um, we've got settings here for doing upgrades if you don't want to use the provided tools. The info page tells us a bit about our miner, so its name and IP address, you can see what kind of control board it is, serial number, uh, a few other bits and pieces. The status page is where most of the detail is. Now I've noticed when I've been running it, um, from when you power it on, it can easily take 20 minutes before it starts hashing. So uh, this unit hasn't been on long enough for it to start hashing yet, but we can see it thinks it's mining and uh, the uptime. These numbers here will fill in in a second. You can click on the individual hash boards to get more information. So by default, it just gives you brief information so you can see all the operating parameters. One thing I quite like is on the detail pane, you can see every chip. And so you can ask it to show you hash rate, temperatures, things like that. And then you can click on every each individual chip to get even more detail. Let's leave this for 20 minutes so we can start getting some actual numbers appearing. A bit more time has passed now. So we're now starting to see the hash rate reported for each of the hash boards and the power consumption. I was previously running Brains OS and uh, I was getting around 1900 watts. So this is, I'm gonna call this about the same. It's probably within the margin for error. Um, the big reason for me for changing from Brains OS to this is the dev fee. 
they only charge 1.4 percent when mining to a nice hash pool now you might ask why aren't i using stock bitmain firmware i find that stock bitmain firmware actually performs similarly and that the aftermarket firmwares often only perform a little bit better but the problem is is when you have something break it takes the whole thing off so for me the most common failure is a hashboard failure and on stock bitmain firmware if you lose one hashboard the whole miner stops working Whereas aftermarket firmwares like Brains will let the other two hashboards keep running while you get the third one repaired. I haven't had a hashboard failure happen on Marathon just yet since I've only just started using it, but hopefully it has the same kind of idea. It'll keep working if there's um, failures. Rather than doing an SD card upgrade, this time let's try doing an upgrade of a stock standard Bitmain S19. So we're just going to use the nice hash tools and perform an online upgrade. The first thing we need to do is set the range of ASICs to scan. So you just double click on IP range over here and update this. I'm only going to have it scan for a single um, ASIC here and then you click on scan for it to find it. Now we tell it we want to install an image and we choose the zip file that was inside of it, the where is it here, the install update restore file and then we simply click on firmware update. It asks if we want to keep the settings and I'll say uh, I'll leave that ticked and just say update all. See it's running right here saying upgrading firmware on selected machines and we're getting a timer. I'll come back once that's finished the upgrade. That process took maybe a minute and a half and it's come back and said it's been successful. This one has actually kept the same IP address as last time so a little bit of a different experience from my previous miner so we'll just log in using the usual root root go into config and we'll have a quick check there all right so it said keep config but that hasn't been kept so I'm just going to swap these two around so I like to do my TCP stratum first because it has lower latency and I'll just go and fill in these other pools I'll be right back I've now filled in my other pools including my private Bitcoin pool and CK pool in case nice hash goes down let's carry on down and have a look so I'm going to change this to using automatic tuning and I'll try and give it just a hash rate target again of 85 to minimize power. Leave it set for using air cooling and we don't need to change anything else. So we'll just go to the top and we'll save that off. I'm going to come across to network and this, oh, it's kept the name for this miner so that's good. And we'll have a quick look at log and just see what's happening here. So it looks like it's still booting up. If we go back to info, I can see this is uh, S19J Pro 100 terahash, which is correct. And like the last one, I found it takes, uh, it feels like a long time, maybe 10 or 20 minutes. So we'll come back once this unit has finished coming online. Okay, we've got some mining. So that took uh, 10 minutes according to the dashboard. Now, interestingly, it's reporting one of the hash boards is non-functional. Uh, it was definitely working before on the old firmware. So I'm going to try giving this unit a reboot and see if that works. I've noticed it's also ramped the fans up to maximum as a result. Um, now one interesting feature on this menu is you can make it blink the lights. So if you had lots of S19s you could have a go at um, uh, locating which one it was. But let me reboot this one and see if that hashboard 2 comes back to life. Good news, after the reboot the third hashboard is online and working nicely. Um, I do notice on this one it's driving the fans quite hard at 74% whereas the other, S9, the other S19 sitting next to it, it runs the fans at 55% and the power consumption is about the same. Um, it's interesting looking at the variation in hashing throughput on individual chips. So I'm just looking at the hash rate one here. So I look at this blue chip here for instance, it's got an average, um, let's scroll down a little bit more, uh, average hash rate of 259 giga hash a second. If I take this red chip, it's only doing 199. And then this one over here, number three, he's doing 314 massively more. So this is what the auto tuning is about, trying to get the best out of every individual chip. From here, I'm gonna leave this running for maybe two or three hours, and then we'll have a look at what it looks like on the nice hash pool side. The miners have been running for a while now. Um, my older miner, the 100 terahash S19, it's actually settled into around 21 and a half 
joules per terahash. This is actually a really big improvement. This minor stock is around 30 joules per terahash, so that's quite um, that's quite an improvement. If we go and look over some of the latest miners, we can see that, for instance, the S19 XP Hybrid, it's 20.8, and the three-phase T21, it's 19 joules. So this, this firmware is putting it in the efficiency of some of the latest miners. Not the S21 Pro, but um, look at the price tag on that one by comparison. If we look at the nice has pull side, this, uh, these rejections here, this is about when we changed over, but since then it's been running nice and stable with no rejections. So uh, this looks really good on the pull side as well. So looking at this, I would say if you've got some older S19s, running this new nice hash firmware is a bit of a no-brainer. The performance improvement is quite a lot and uh, the 1.4% dev fee will easily uh, be covered by the additional gain in efficiency. The newer, well at least for me, my newer S19, the 120 terahash one, there was pretty much no change, but um, we did also manage to verify that it is able to run when there's one hash pool reporting as failed. I'm gonna leave uh, some videos up around my head, so uh, see if one of those takes your interest. Thanks for watching.